that's our tradition. If we may recite the cool way test of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? You got to try to bring a little humor to this, I think. Uh, you had Quentin here a couple weeks ago. Quentin's an engineer, good guy, really knows the structure. I'm not an engineer. I view myself as somewhat of a practitioner. I've actually worked in municipal government, county government. Now I work for a consulting company known as Arrow Consulting. History lesson in that, this is where I actually get paid to be here. Uh, it actually is the uh, company that came together from the old Huth Engineers and Gilbert Associates many years ago. So we've kind of become the successor to all that. Our corporate offices are in Airport Road in Lidditz. So that's my page stick. I actually uh, worked for Mount Joy Borough for about 12 years, thought I was going to retire. They asked me to get involved in business development. Uh, that didn't work real well. I just finished a stint as a town, an interim township manager in Lawrence Wattara Township in Dauphin County. So I'm a local government junkie. Uh, I want to try to talk to you. And I brought this up and it said, is it a crisis? So I thought I'd put the mother of all bombs up there. That would probably give you some context of what we're looking at in the, in the business. And if I got Larry Halliker explaining the, the arrows, we're really doing good. I didn't do good. <laughs> that one? Yeah. Okay, go back. Uh, is it really a problem? Well, just kind of give you the context of this thing, and I'm in front of your president here, so that's working real well. We have about 5,000 to 6,000 miles each of sewer and water lines in Lancaster County, many of which are 50 years old or older. Now, the context of that is that we've got some water lines in some areas that are still made of wood. We've got stormwater pipes that are still made of wood. And then we've got clay, and then we've got concrete, and then we've got cast iron. Now we've got PVC plastic. So. Again, uh, context is enough sewer pipe to travel from Atlantic Ocean to Pacific Ocean back to Chicago in Lancaster County. Now, don't hold me that number of Charlotte. Katz and Moy were here. She'd probably say it's 5,122. But in context, that gives you. While no one is really sure, I would also guess there are at least as many miles of stormwater pipes. Now, that's something that's just kind of coming to burner lately. When you talk about Chesapeake Bay, water cleanup, water quality. But I'm telling you, that is a big, big hole that we haven't even spoken about yet. This is kind of timely. Anyone know what this is? Jim, you can't t comment here. Anyone know what that is? That's a vid video of a sewer pipe. You see anything wrong with that? It might have a crack in it. Guess where it was located? Everyone knows where Boothsbury is. Well, now you imagine that sewer pipe out here in this street, right here, 15 feet deep. Right there, the catacombs. Pipe approximately 10 feet deep. Again, some more pictures. I thought this was exciting after lunch. You know, all of you ate, you'd have fun with it. Now, here, you, this is what happens. You've heard about tree roots getting in pipes. That's tree roots coming into pipes. You all have that in your yards, because I'm only talking what's in the streets. Now you've got to realize what's going from the curb into your house. And then, because when you can't flush and you can't get water, you're going to call your local government and say, my water doesn't work. And they're going to come out and say, yeah, it does. It's in your house. So if somebody tells you you've got roots in your, that's what you got. Now, this is clean pipe. With clean, well, not clean, but stuff going through it. But this is actually the same pipe that was put in clean manhole. How many of you ever looked at manholes? That's exciting. <laughs> Sometime when your public works crew from your town is out there, ask them if you can look in the manhole. Because it's really fun. And if you really want to have fun, you can go to the sewer plant and ask, ask them to look at stuff. Now, this is a water pipe that is commonly found in your streets. This was actually in a township in northern Lancaster County. It's exactly 50 years old. It's a six-inch pipe. 
but the air, air water available going through there after 50 years is only three inches. And we in this industry call that tuberculosis. True story? It's not, but that's what we call it. But that is actually the calcification of any kind of uh, hard water. It could be the chemicals of treatment that goes in there. Perfectly fine. Your water's fine. It's healthy. It's not a problem. But as you can see, when we have six-inch water pipes and they're 50 years old and you had fire protection for your industries, now you can't get that deluge of water. So what do we do? Well, we actually can clean those pipes. Process of clean. There we clean them again. And now we cement line them. So that's one of the new infrastructure techniques we're using on some of the water and sewer lines. Uh, the, the water line here was in place in... Uh, in the Brownstown area, I don't know where, but we actually restored that. Shorelines, we're doing the same things today. We aren't necessarily putting all new lines in, we're actually putting slip linings in. Anyone see a stormwater pipe there? Got the button. There it is, right there. All of you have those. Another one, stormwater river discharge. Nobody thinks about that in Marietta, Pennsylvania, but that's all update and material we got to take care of. Though that's what all of us are aware of right here, typical stormwater drain. But you got to realize all the pipes. Now I want to take this a little deeper. I thought this is actually a cross section of West Pine Street and North State Street in Ephrata, because if you realize the complications you have here, because you've got You've got the sewer line, you've got the water line, you've got the storm line, and then you've got the connections that go to the houses. And here, and you can see the difficulty that you have when you begin to replace this infrastructure. It's complex. If you would look at the city, you would see it even more complex. And a couple years ago, we went to New York City and they opened up a square in the meatpacking district and it really looks bad because now you have steam pipes and pressure pipes and everything else. And I'm kind of building this up to let you know what the cost is. Because you see the issue, but it, it really becomes difficult. But you got curb stops, water mains, fire hydrants, water meters that are on your house, the services, the blue lines that go into your house, a four inch water main and a six inch water main. There you have two of them in one street. Why? Redundancy, so pressure, so you can keep the water clean. Again, you got uh, stormwater inlets, stormwater pipes, and then when you try to replace one, guess what? You can replace them all. How do we get to this point where we're having trouble with our sewer infrastructure? I'm going to stop one more time about water. One of the interesting things we're affected by negligence not taking care of our system, investing. Then we have another an anomaly. You've all kind of been reading about the water line issues the city of Lancaster has in Quaker Hills and so forth. Those are actually concrete pipes. And there's an evolving theory, and I'm not going to quote that, but these concrete pipes are 60 years old and uh, that they may have actually started breaking because of the... Um, earthquake we had some time ago and the aftershocks. And there's a really great possibility that's what's happening. So just the, the various different ways. Why are, is our infrastructure falling behind? You probably heard the same from Quentin. We didn't invest in our infrastructure. Well, guess what? We didn't do the same in water when we put water lines in, sewer lines in, or stormwater pipe. When user rates were set, capital replacement costs were not included. Why? Well. They didn't have a systematic rate replacement plan, and nobody wants to raise rates. I mean, we don't need the money now, so we won't set a capital reserve account there to do that. Developer dedication without capital budget contribution. You know, as a municipal official, I really love the fact when developers build a development and they gave us a mile of pipe and we could collect revenues from. And that was great, but when we took that pipe, we weren't smart enough to say, oh, you know, we got the pipe for free, but we would still be setting something aside for when ha those have to be replaced in 30 or 40 or 50 years. So again, we, we kind of went hand to mouth, and we didn't keep up to it very much. I'm sure what you heard uh, from Quentin. 
The regulatory compliance issues, well versed on that. Uh, Chesapeake Bay compliance, uh, water quality compliance, uh, items like that. I'll give you kind of a, a number to think about. 5,500 miles of sewer and water pipe at perhaps $225 a foot. Now, some way I can do it for more, I can do it for less. You know, let's take a number. But that estimate to the value of our sewer and water lines are $6 billion each. B is county. $4 billion for stormwater pipe. That doesn't include treatment plants, like a wastewater treatment plant. There's a discussion of a new wastewater treatment plant in East Earl and Terry Hill Burr that'll serve maybe 2,000 people. The cost is $17 million. But we got to do it because they're failing on lot systems, so therefore they need to hook up. Water treatment plants. Water treatment plants, again, you can go in the city and be 30, 40 million. You can go in Mount Joy Burroughs, 8 million. And then stormwater treatment facilities, something that we've only begun to talk about. Some that we're blessed in this community because actually Lancaster City is far and ahead of that game. Whether it's uh, rain gardens, whether it's green roofs, whether it's infiltration, it's what each one of your communities, no matter where you live, will have to deal with in the next three to five years because they've got a new permit that just went in. So if you haven't heard about things like a stormwater fee where you live, it's coming. And you're either going to pay a stormwater fee or you're going to pay more general fund tax revenues. It's going to happen. What's going to happen? I guess I already said it. Rates will go up. New fees will be imposed. New consolidation of systems. Sales of systems, that's kind of the buzzword. And I'll get in trouble with uh, Mr. Espenshade over here probably. But there, there's this new reality out there that municipalities are selling their private water and uh, their public water and sewer systems to capitalize their debt. That may be police pension debt, maybe whatever. And that actually is good if the sale is done right. What we've experienced though is a lot of municipalities are selling their assets and they're not making smart choices. They're actually, we actually, John and I worked on a process and I guess I look at, I'm allowed to say in Middletown, Pennsylvania, and if not, he'll, in my opinion, it says in my opinion, I can say that. And as a county commissioner, he was our solicitor. So he always said, if I say in my opinion, they can't hold you liable. So in my opinion, sold a system to a company by the name of Suez. Uh, Suez is an investor group that was put together, bought the system, and they promised the rate payers, your rates won't go up for three years. They didn't. But in the uh, fine print underneath, it said, except for capital construction costs. And when we actually did the evaluation of the capital construction costs, it was interesting. It included light bulbs, uh, included a, a, a new fence, things that would normally not be in. That particular community was going to see anywhere between, for the first year of the cost allocation, I'm getting in the weeds here, but the first year of cost allocation would have been $60 a month for the first year. Now understand, that's amortized off the life of the product. So if the sewer plant was 40 years, you'd be paying that $60 for 40 years. If next year they put a new water tank in, you'd be paying that surcharge. So in one year, it added almost a million dollars to the coffers, the way the deal was. But you're going to hear a lot of that. You're, you're, you're going to hear a lot of your municipalities looking at selling them because they do have a significant pension debt, just like the state, just like the feds, whatever. But this is something that, that can be do done very well for a community. The other thing I think you'll see is community emerge systems. Um, we have a lot, and again, well run, and I want to make this clear, in Lancaster County, our municipal, our water, our sewer systems are far better than our lot. There are some devils coming down the road. Some of the infrastructure has to be replaced. You have a Bart Township, and I'm picking, I don't know the detail, but say Bart Township, we're serving 300 people. You have a, a Salisbury Township where they have Gap, which is a relatively small plant. They cannot keep treatment operators and plant operators in place. So you're going to either see some acquisitions, you may see some mergers, you may see people. I use the Terry Hill plant uh, 
idea Terry Hill's an aging plant, northern Lancaster County, which if anyone's familiar up there, if you go from Terry Hill to Five Point, well, there's two sewer systems within about a mile. I can go up to Middle in Dolphin County, and you have Middletown, you have Harrisburg International Airport, you have High Spire, you have Royal, you have four sewer treatment plants in about a mile and a half. So you're going to see some of that stuff beginning to happen. Again, I think you'll see sales. Bottom line, folks, we cannot keep kicking this can down the road. Uh, it is a big ticket item. Uh, you. We just did, a, um, I did a project when I was in Mount Joy as a municipal manager. That picture in Boobs Brewery, if any of you know where Main Street is down to 772, I know, we know it down here, about two and a half blocks, it's a million bucks. And that was water, and that was sewer, and it was curb, and it was sidewalk. You're looking at pretty much, if you live in an urbanized area, a half million bucks a block to do the infrastructure improvement. And believe it or not, the road costs are the least expensive of what you got. But I would wager to guess most every one of you will deal with one of these issues in your community today or tomorrow. Don't have any magic bill. I kind of give you the speech. Volunteer to your municipal boards to serve on some of the municipal authority boards. That's, there's going to be a lot of activity, and people have trouble getting help to do that. So I'm kind of going to end there and ask if there are any questions. I tried to give a review of the issues and what you might have to deal with, but uh, can talk about anything you might have in your mind. Try any questions? Oh.